So if you're looking to get into building your first website, but not looking to start from scratch or more of the back end aspects of doing so, then you're probably looking at some type of website builder like Wix or Squarespace. And this could be for really anything, whether you're a business or an individual blogger or need a portfolio or really any type of person who needs some type of basic website built for their business or whatever reason it is, Wix and Squarespace are definitely at the top of the list amongst the most popular site builders out there. Quick, easy, and functional customization and building tools are probably at the top of your list. And while both of these may offer those, there are certainly some differences that we should definitely look into so you can make the best decision for you and your site. So there's kind of four categories, let's call it, for each site builder so you can make the best decision of which one might fit you best. Number one, I wanna run through pricing and plans, of course. Both sites offer different plans and pricing, and it will be good to compare those. Two, let's call this usability. So basically design, templates, interface, and kind of the whole user experience. Pros, cons, where they're lacking, and some of their strengths on both Wix and Squarespace. Number three, SEO tools, AKA search engine optimization. Basically what tools do each site builder have to improve the process of driving organic traffic to your site? Definitely needs its own category here because who wants a website if no one can even find it? And finally, we'll bundle some miscellaneous stuff like integrations, and then let's call it e-commerce friendliness. It definitely deserves its own category as well, because in this day and age, that's some people's end game, selling stuff online. So let's start over on Squarespace here, right? And let's start where anyone wants to start. How much is it gonna cost you? So Squarespace actually does offer a 14 day free trial where you can kind of get the feel and try out some templates and features before fully committing. Can do all of this too without even inputting your credit card information, which looks like a nice little bonus so it can kind of be a hassle-free trial run. As far as more advanced pricing, if you decide you like it and want to go all in, there's a few different plans depending on what you're trying to accomplish, it looks like, and kind of the features that would go along with it. Over on the left, you can see the personal plan. It looks like if you pay annually, it comes out to about $16 per month, but of course multiply by that 12, and you'll get the full annual dollar amount that you'll pay in kind of a one-time annual fee. But if you're paying month to month, it comes out to $23 per month. And you'll notice this is the case for kind of all Squarespace plans and kind of keeps the, if you pay annually, you'll get a discount that kind of some other subscriptions offer too. And if you pay annually, you'll find you actually get a free custom domain. Whereas if you paid monthly, it does not come with that. So it's definitely something to consider for sure. But in the personal plan, it's pretty basic. You'll really just get some templates looks like, and across all plans, it looks like it's optimized for mobile devices as well. Um, and you'll see the list of down here as well for some basic website analytics to the ability to add some digital products. Uh, and then SEO tools like meta descriptions, titles, more descriptions, and kind of all that jazz. E-commerce is a no-go on the personal plan. If you want the features and abilities, you'll need to upgrade to at least the business account. But even then, the features are limited, um, looking like a 3% transaction fee for product sales, and then limited kind of leaving out subscriptions, product reviews, and point of sale, and some other things as well. So if e-commerce is kind of your end goal, then definitely the commerce basic or the commerce advanced plans are going to be what you're looking for with kind of no transaction fees, product reviews, and even advanced shipping and discounts depending on the plan. These four plans range from anywhere to $16 per month to $49 per month if you pay annually. Again, multiply by 12 to get that final number or $23 per month all the way up to $65 per month if you pay month over month. Overall, the personal plan really looks like it's built for the individuals who are looking for a basic website with maybe some easy to build templates and customization to start from, and then some basic analytics. It does have a max of two contributors on this plan and doesn't include the e-commerce features. The business plan looks for more for people looking to dabble in digital products, but again, mainly just personal or small business site looking for some better features and kind of total customization with the included CSS and JavaScript. Um, you will be hit with that 3% transaction fee with this plan. So if you're selling in bulk or more experienced with higher volume of products, it'll probably make sense just to upgrade 
to the Commerce Basic or the Commerce Advanced. And both of those plans offer some real solid commerce features and abilities with the Advanced plan just adding on to the full experience with subscriptions, advanced discounts, and advanced APIs, and, and kind of a bit more. So now let's take a turn and get into the interface, usability, templates, and kind of the overall user experience of Squarespace. So if we look here, Squarespace definitely has some good organization based on the type of website you're trying to build and kind of respective templates. Anything from photography to blogs, to travel and real estate, uh, kind of you name it. And scrolling down, they look fairly solid, especially kind of their most popular design templates. Looks like we have some wedding websites kind of in competition with Zola and the Knot here, um, to selling some products, uh, some podcasts looks like, and even some photography templates. Lots of different colors, customizations, and options to kind of get the beginner started right out of the gate. And if we click in one real quick, you can see how easy it is to kind of add blocks, images, uh, swap out photos, text, uh, edit the site header up here um, with your own socials, and even to add some more integration options. All in all, user experience and ease of use looks pretty solid in Squarespace, even for complete beginners. So usability and consumer experience is nice, but kind of what about the SEO tools? So we can continue within this example and for different images, it looks like you get some alt text options uh, for photo description to kind of improve your search engine optimization as well. Photo linking looks good. Uh, and then if you come back out, it looks like you get some decent analytics and can even hook up Google Search Console uh, to optimize for any keywords you're trying to rank for. And then of course, pages, titles, and descriptions, and more generally, it looks like they include an SEO panel um, or checklist of sorts, which looks real nice and goes through site info, design, domain, and URL setup. And of course, the more traffic you get, the more you can optimize and adapt your content to then have better SEO on your site. So all in all, Squarespace looks pretty solid on the SEO front of things. And finally, integrations and the e-commerce friendliness. Touched on this quite a bit already, but it looks like Squarespace does give you options depending on how much volume and expertise, I guess you could call it, uh, you have and or want with e-commerce on your site. Solid analytics, solid features, and with easy to build templates, seems good on the digital product side of things. Integrations with apps and other external sites seems pretty solid too, kind of being able to integrate with your social media accounts, uh, Google Search Console, and even email marketing platforms like MailChimp. But obviously with the good, there can be some drawbacks. Uh, most commonly I've seen is just limited personal customization options. Some templates can look pretty generic compared to other from scratch websites, but I suppose that's kind of what you get when you get easy to build features. It's definitely tailored to people who don't want to do all the back end work. And then finally, customer support is something that's kind of been flagged over and over, only being able to get in touch through email rather than more immediate options like live chat or over the phone. I could see how that might be a drawback for some businesses who need more immediate solutions. So all in all, Squarespace looks pretty solid as a site builder, but obviously this video isn't just about Squarespace. So we wanna see how Wix also stacks up against it. So let's do kind of a 180 and look at Squarespace's competition. So pricing and plans, Wix actually allows you to sign up and build a 100% functioning website for free. Obviously it comes with some drawbacks with lack of features and custom domains, etc. but not bad to have in the back of your pocket as a trial run. But let's take a look at their other options where all of them include a custom domain, none of that Wix branding that everyone loves, and then 24 seven customer support. Now these plans range again from $16 per month for the light version to a whopping $500 per month for the enterprise plan, which they actually don't even have on here and I had to look elsewhere to find that. And kind of at first glance right off the bat is Wix pricing looks to be a bit more aggressive once you get past the business plan. Payments and transaction costs and limitations look to be a little more strict on Wix as you can see here with automated sales tax calculations, um, topping out at 100 per month on the business plan, which isn't horrible, but if you're dealing in such a high volume, it could prove to be problematic. Overall though, Squarespace and Wix do start their beginner plans at $16 per month. So on to the user experience. It looks like Wix has templates as well, but 
Looking at the two between Squarespace and Wix, I'd say Squarespace has better features with the templates and overall, just better looking ones. Some of these Wix templates look a bit over the place and dated. So clicking on one of these here, the toolbar looks pretty good. Elements, sections, design, and more. I'd say Wix definitely looks a bit more unstructured for those looking to do a bit more of the backend coding to make it look like your own compared to Squarespace. Looks like some new AI tools with the text in here. Um, so let's give it a try with something in here. Business type photography, what's your business name? Let's just say photos uh, about, we'll do a title. Create text, uh, pretty good. Capturing life's precious moments, the art of telling your story through photos. It looks like it spits some decent ideas back out at you. So that's a nice little addition that Wix has probably put in in the past year or two with the whole AI movement. And then some options for embedded code and elements and sites, definitely tailoring towards the more backend customizable stuff. And then they even have a full blown dev mode where you can add your own code, uh, connect external APIs and some other things. So you can really make it your own website. So moving on to the SEO features, it looks like URL customization, meta tags, redirects, image optimization. Uh, they have an SEO checklist just like Squarespace does. Uh, SEMrush and Google Search Console integration and more. I'll go on a little tangent here too to say SEO is really only as good as your content. I've seen that Wix's SEO isn't very good or I've seen reviews that Squarespace's SEO is lacking and whatnot. But ultimately it looks like they have some solid tools here um, and opportunities to integrate with other SEO platforms as well to really put together some high traffic content. So it definitely might lack in a couple of areas, but both look like they have just about all the access you could have to drive organic traffic to your sites. And then finally into the e-commerce side of things, you definitely get what you pay for, kind of like Squarespace. You get some drop shipping and advanced shipping types of products. Uh, payment tools and more just depending on the plan that you go with. It seems decent and pretty similar to Squarespace's offerings. However, I'd probably have to go with Squarespace over Wix just for its shipping tax and product features. It's kind of strange if I had to wrap this up. It looks as if Wix has more features than Squarespace, but Squarespace just does a better job of organization and accessibility of their own features. All in all, it's really just gonna depend what you're going for. Wix offers the beginner website builder and templates, but truly offers the editing and customization of every detail and offers the free plan as well. And while Squarespace might not have so much on the back end of customization, it probably makes up for it in its templates and kind of more stable editor. Overall, it's really just gonna come down to your own personal preference on which platform feels more intuitive to your own needs, but both would likely do just fine in most situations for most customers. Anyways, I hope this video gave you some insights into different features and the pros and cons of Squarespace and Wix. If you liked it, definitely consider subscribing and have a great day.